you're very welcome to um, mentor training January 2024, um, which focuses on block two. First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you for hosting one of our trainees for the block two or contrasting school placements. What you do is incredibly valuable in the influence of any of our teacher trainees. Um, the PowerPoint has audio clips on key information pages to support you. The many models of mentoring have shared components, such as identifying development areas and providing feedback. And we all know that strong mentoring plays a key role in the retention of new teachers. So the role of the manager mentor um, is to oversee that trainees and mentors have regular weekly meetings that are scheduled into the timetable. And it may be that the managing mentor offers support to the mentor to carry out some lesson observations, opportunities for deliberate practice or mini coaching sessions, and indeed the final report. The mentor, then you will have the most contact with the trainee and will carry out one formal observation each week. The lesson ideally should be 30 minutes at a minimum. And the mentor will also meet with the trainee for up to one hour. The time is a guide only. During this meeting, you will have a check in. The trainee will tell you about any training they have had and received on the Thursday out. And more in depth discussion around the observed lesson can take place. As a mentor, you play a crucial role in the development of the trainee. Um, you are their constant and often offer these soft skills as well as, well as other mechanisms to support them, which we will look at briefly. Um, we just want to say a massive thank you. You are making such a difference. The curriculum strands covered through the programme can be seen at the top left hand side of the screen. The six strands feed into lesson observations. It's what we look for in a trainee lesson, and they also feed into the reports at the end of the block. Planned into the 2023-24 curriculum are four intensive training and practicing episodes, which total 20 days overall. And this is about putting theory and practice together. Your trainee in this block will be receiving training on scaffolding. So we encourage them to focus their own observations of other practitioners on this. The rationale behind intensive training and practice, or ITAP as we tend to call it, is that intensive theory and practice is followed by implementation of the key skill in placement. Trainees can embed their learning by practicing what would happen in the classroom and then receiving feedback in real time. The topics that ITAP will cover are foundational areas of learning, the key things that trainees need to know and be able to do before they finish their training year. The National Institute of Teaching have selected four focus areas for ITAP this year, which we feel will have the most impact on outcomes for trainees and students. They increase in complexity and move from a focus on setting up learning to understanding the needs of a class, to understanding the needs of individual children. It is front loaded, so all should be completed by the end of spring term one. And this is to give the trainees time to embed the practice into their teaching. Deliberate practice will form a core part of mentor meetings. And this is about giving the opportunity to prepare for the live game because every moment in the classroom counts towards making a difference for our young people. Deliberate practice can feel somewhat awkward at first, but if you've previously mentored an ECT, you will be familiar with this. If a trainee, for example, was struggling with questions or getting pupil responses during their lessons, you as a mentor would perhaps model how this could be done. The trainee would then have an opportunity to practice this with you in a low stakes environment before trying it out with their class. So just to recap some of the fundamentals of deliberate practice, which is ultimately about supporting the trainee and pushing them out of their comfort zone 
where we know that learning happens. We work towards well-defined specific goals, which will have come through your observations or areas for development that you've picked up upon. The trainee will have a model from you as the expert before going to practice it in that low stakes environment and taking that feedback into the classroom. Trainees will develop their own mental models as a result of what good practice looks like so that they can put it into context. We all know that there's no such thing as a typical week in teaching, but as far as possible, we need to make the mentoring a supportive cycle by including some of the key elements each week. Observations of the trainees will take place weekly at an agreed time. We do suggest that all observations should last at least 30 minutes, and we know that lessons are often longer than this. Each week as a mentor, you will formally meet with your trainee at an agreed time. And this is the opportunity for the mentor to first check in with how the trainee is doing on the whole. Are they coping with the workload? What are their concerns? We know that there'll be other ad hoc chats and those 10 minute chats here and there are important, but please make sure your trainee doesn't have an unrealistic expectation of how much of your time they can have. Your trainee will have access to a live progress tracker, which ultimately frames the mentor meeting. And we encourage them to complete this live to reduce the need for additional work. We will take you through this frame a little bit later. So here we have the observation form and there's one for managing mentors and one for mentors. The managing mentor observation form has one additional box at the back. On either, you can see and notice the strands again coming through and there are prompt points on the document here to support you. For each strand, the observer just needs to write a few clear, concise bullet points that give the trainee very specific strengths that you have observed. So you can see a worked example for this, um, for each of the mentors in the quick guide and the documents that we've emailed out. This is the second page, um, the additional box on the back for um, managing mentors and tutors, which I referred to earlier. So for managing mentors and tutors, um, there is a second section which encourages the trainee to refer to perhaps any research or reading that they might recommend. So for example, they might need to read up on hinge question um, as defined by Dylan Williams or no opt out questioning um, technique from Doug Lameau. Visiting tutors, subject tutors and other subject specialists from our own team will make judgments on subject knowledge. But if a mentor flags an issue with gaps in subject knowledge, then a subject specialist may come along in place of a linked tutor to assess that subject knowledge. Assessment of English proficiencies are made reporting on the trainee standards of grammar, spelling and spoken English. There are a number of layers of assessment that permeate through the course and this table sets those out for you um, to see clearly in terms of who is responsible for what. Um, so I would draw your attention to the, um, the first column. Um, weekly observations. So mentors are asked to carry out a weekly observation and um, providing feedback along with setting a mentor action step for the trainee. And this is something to work on or an area for development. We would want trainees to act upon these fairly quickly. And if you notice that it isn't happening, please do get in touch um, with us to raise a concern. Um, the last thing that you will do as a mentor is completing the report at the end of the block or placement. And again, this falls under the six strands that are embedded throughout. You will be making a judgment to whether your trainee is on trajectory or not on trajectory to meet the teaching standards by the end of the year. Now we have shared some deadlines of other external assessments, just purely so that you can see the crunch points. Assessment two, for example, is due after Easter, but the trainees may wish to talk to you about this whilst in their setting. So this is what the progress tracker looks like, and it will be accessed live by the trainee from their e-portfolio. 
Um, trainees should have one mentor meeting each week and one per two weeks for part time trainees. Times are a guidance only. Um, please do make sure that this takes place as the discussions from the meetings uh, form part of the trainees evidence. Trainees complete the progress tracker each week during the mentor meetings and these actual meeting minutes are documented by the trainee during the discussions and it means that it's advisable for the trainee to have a computer or a laptop during this allocated time. So let's have a look on the next slide about what it involves. So the first section is a check in and it's focused around trainees wellbeing and if any additional support is needed for the trainee. It may be that the week has gone extremely well and they wish to share some of the highlights with you. On the other hand, if a trainee has been a little down with something specific, this is the chance to talk it through and see what support they may need. A mentor can always contact the link tutor if support is needed. Section two of the progress tracker is the review. And again, trainees will be bullet, bullet pointing some notes from the training. And it begins with the trainee articulating to you the key points from the training in the past week, whether that be centre or school based. The example here in the white box shows a typical response. I like to think of this part as you've had the training now, so what? What has the impact been and what key points has the trainee taken from it? If anyone is wondering how I will know what was taught on a Thursday, it will be emailed out on a Friday from us via our weekly newsletter and training summary. Again, the same happens in part B of this section, but it's just focused on subject knowledge development, as we all know how important that is. And secondary, perhaps this can be taken from your subject audit. Section C brings us to the action steps review. The action steps will be set each week. And the first one is relating to theory sessions that have taken place on a Thursday. And these will be sent through from us on that weekly newsletter and summary. The second will be relating to school based discussions. For example, an area of development from a lesson observation, perhaps. And this is where you as the mentor will provide an action step specifically for your own trainee and draw on from an observation carried out. When first starting out, there will be no rollover. You'll see here in the completed version at the bottom of the screen that there is no rollover step, as in this scenario, the, the last week the trainee achieved her action step in the observation. If a trainee has a rollover, so for example, they didn't meet it, and are acting upon it, absolutely fine. If they're not acting upon it and no progress has taken place, then it could be that more specific support is needed. And the final part of the review section allows for what we call praise, probe and deliberate practice. So I see this as the crux of any mentor meeting. Um, in terms of the praise, so in this section, the mentor would be given um, key strengths from the lesson that they have, have observed that particular week. In terms of the probe, it might be questions that you want to ask the trainee about their observation or perhaps um, an area for development that you have noted. And the third section is that deliberate practice. So taking one of those pr uh, probe sections or probe targets and putting it into practice within that low stakes environment as discussed earlier. And the final thing to mention is a tab at the bottom of the progress tracker called T TS8 and part two. Um, trainees should be adding evidence of any training relating to teaching standard eight here. Um, so any training that they've carried out specifically within school or the department or across the trust of schools. Uh, we've pre-populated parts, but there is always room to add more in. The trainee is able to do that. Please do add your initials as and when you have seen evidence or you know that they have attended some training. At the bottom of this section, there is a checklist and it's about professional um, behaviour just for you to be aware of it now, but please do complete it during the placement. 
Um, and again, your link tutor will help with any questions you may have um, during their checking in or visits. So some key dates then within block two, we would encourage all trainees to make sure that they have um, uploaded a timetable to their e-portfolio. Uh, no later than Friday, the 26th of January, but as soon as possible. Um, we are aware that sometimes, specifically in primary, that these may change from week to week. Um, so in terms of the teaching then, so secondary, you will be starting with eight teaching lessons and one team teach. That could be an SEND or interventions, and you will move up to 10 solo teaching and two support towards the end of the block. Primary trainees will be starting with approximately 25% of teaching and moving up to 60% again by the end of the, the placement. And we would always encourage at this point as well, some team teaching. The formal report from mentors is due on Wednesday, the 20th of March. Um, correspondence will be sent in due course relating to that. Each trainee is allocated a link tutor, and here you can see we've got three, Sue, Marsh, Elaine Guzdek and Katie Isles. And the link tutor will be the first go to colleague should a trainee have a question or an issue. We do work closely as a team and have a wealth of ITT experience across primary and secondary. Each trainee is aware of who their link tutor is. And our role is to realistically help on that day to day smooth uh, running of the programme to provide a link between the trainee and yourselves. Uh, we will be QAing each block to ensure that the trainee is making progress, carrying out wellbeing checks amongst our trainees um, and to observe or coordinate a subject uh, specialist visit if needed. But we will all be carrying out a visit of our trainees during this block and these will be um, communicated via your trainee. So finally, for mentors and managing mentors out there, there are a range of places where you can get information from. So we've got our partnership pages, which we do add to on a regular basis. Trainees also have access to a Trinity Institute of Education SharePoint. Um, and of course, please, if you're ever in doubt, just drop us an email or call into Jill and we'll be happy to support you. Um, hopefully you'll be receiving regular e reminders via our weekly emails and summary training sheets. Um, we will be sending out a support video on how to complete the report.